Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Thursday, January 18th, 2007, and the market's just closed. Uh, we had a little bit of selling here today. The S&P 500 spiders closed down 56 cents, only about 0.4%. The bigger sell-off, um, the NASDAQ 100, was down 1.8%, led by the semiconductors that were down almost 4% in there. Um, tomorrow, I won't be trading because I'll be teaching a class online. Uh, we're talking about what I call trend alignment. And if you have more interest in that, go ahead and take a look at the uh, sign-up page uh, in one of the posts, about three or four posts down. But the S&Ps today, again, we've been looking at this market as range-bound, basically defined by 140 and a half down near that 50-day moving average up to this rec these recent highs near about 143 and a half. Um, yesterday, what I was saying is that it looked like we were possibly undergoing some distribution and maybe a little bit further selling, but uh, I didn't expect it to turn into much because we do have this rising five-day moving average. The support we were looking for was down to 142.50 to 142.75. You can see the uh, that area is where we did indeed find a little bit of support, but it's looking like the market's turning a little more sideways in here, and I would say that you want to continue to exercise pretty extreme caution in here. That breakdown in the semis is pretty uh, troubling. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, but 142 looks like the risk, and then below that, probably the 141 and a half where we had this breakout occur from. If that f full move is to fail, then it could be uh, you know, indicating some bigger problems potentially. But the market looks similar to maybe where it did you know, somewhere over here. Not quite breaking down all the way yet because we've got this rising five-day moving average, but we definitely want to be uh, more uh, cautious in here. So take a look now at the NASDAQ 100 trust, the QQQQ. And in here you can see the breakdown was a lot more severe. It came down to the... Uh, to the 20-day moving average. We've got that 20-day moving average just above the 50-day moving average. I think it was about uh, a week ago today that I'd said a possible scenario is that this market breaks out, fails, and then that could lead to a bigger sell-off. Now, again, there's no evidence of a bigger sell-off yet. We've still got this uh, market. In my mind, it's more of a distributive phase. Uh, and now, especially since this uh, breakout seems to have failed in here and is back into this range, the range, again, we've got support down near that 43 level and resistance up near 45. But looking at the 10-minute time frame, you can see in here that yesterday I suggested caution that it looked like the easy money has been made on this recent rally and that these lower highs and lower lows were starting to be a little bit concerning, especially since we saw that late day breakdown. It did get below the five day moving average and now the five day moving average is declining. So it's telling us that this indeed to me looks like a failed breakout right now. It's gonna t take a lot of work to turn this thing around right here. So over the next week or so, I think it you've got to continue to be very cautious. You can take a look at things like Fibonacci and look for imagined levels of support, and perhaps we get some support. If you look at the uh, year low right here from January 3rd after the Federal Reserve announcement, um, then take it to the high, we had an almost exact 50% retracement level. It doesn't mean that's a place to buy, just like it doesn't mean you wanted to buy at the 38.2% retracement. Those are potential levels of support. So I, I think I, I realistically, this whole move for the year is considered failed once it breaks down below that 61.8% retracement level. So the 43.5, 43.60 level is going to be an important level for this market going forward, and we'll see what happens because that's also about where we have that 50-day moving average. But it looks like it's back into the range. We did have an increase in the volume on the sell-off the last two days. You can see that this volume's picking up two days in a row as the market sold off. So we have to be very cautious in here. That's what the message of the market is. That's not uh, anything more than just objectively looking at what price action is telling us. We've been looking at these semiconductors and observing that they've been in a range of about 32 and a half up to 36 or so, and that they, they broke past some resistance in here, uh, then came up towards uh, the high end of that range, fell back down to the midpoint, and yesterday and today failed miserably in there. So this group is really one of the worst-looking groups um, 
over the you know for if you look at today's action but realistically it's still stuck within this bigger range it's really going to take a break of 32 and a half a convincing break of 32 and a half for me to really get uh, bearish on these semiconductors for now it still remains neutral nothing's really changed we've definitely got a wide trading range in here and it's covered a lot of territory over the last week or so but realistically we're in a range bound if you're an investor for uh, shorter term traders obviously there's some uh, good movement in there mid caps mdy again we've got the resistance up at 150 here support down near the 145 level and this market i had said yesterday seemed like it was holding up better than the rest of the uh, indices we've still got though a neutral market that's the best way to look at this market so anything can happen in here until we break out convincingly past the 150 level or down through that 145 support then realistically there's nothing to get excited about on the daily time frame your your action is going to come on the shorter term time frames if they would just pull up right here and here's a look at the 10 minute time frame so we can see that we've had these lower highs and lower lows and we are in a short term downtrend if we take a look at fibonacci just to throw that on there too um, to see what the you know, from the year low to the year high here so far again we're at about that 50 percent retracement level so i think filling the gap at 147 and fa 147 rather and failing down there would send a message that we need to be a lot more defensive in this environment let's take a look at the stocks we've been mentioning first up eris group symbol a r r s and we got involved in eris group at 1320 um as it as it uh let's just take a look here hold on let me change my tool uh, 1320 right here as it took out this little level of resistance after that failed gap lower and we had raised our stop yesterday $13.30 so we're stopped out with a dime in there FFHL this stock uh, we had gotten involved in what price did we get involved in this one but 14 bucks a share after this pullback and then strength in there and maybe I was a little bit too conservative with the stop in here, uh, but we did get stopped out today at 1374 for a loss of 26 cents. Apogee, APOG, we got involved in this one yesterday at $18.40, and I'd suggested putting your stop up at $18.70. So you're out today with a, uh, a gain of 30 cents in Apogee. Net Tees, N T E S. We were in involved in this one at 1905. Stopped out today at 1890 for a loss of 15 cents. ALTH. We got involved in this one today at 650. It came down. I don't know what I was thinking with a 10 cent stop in there. Anyways, we did get stopped out with 10 cent loss in ALTH. NYNY. This is Empire Resources. What we were looking for in here was a move past nine dollars and fifteen cents before we bought it today. Obviously, that never occurred. No trade should have taken place. SCLN. Here we were looking for a move past three oh eight before we purchased it. No, uh, no such strength in there today. So. Uh, no reason to get involved. And finally, eBay. eBay did meet our entry criteria by rallying up to 30.10 first. And then it broke down early on. You'd have to probably look at a one-minute time frame to see it right here. Uh, but it did break down. It, di it did rally to 30.10. 30, um, let's take a look. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't trade this one, so maybe my notes are wrong. We were looking for a rally to $30.10, which occurred right about here. And then we were looking to sell it short below 29.95. So actually, whoa, what the heck's going on there? I don't know what I'm doing with this. Um, 29.95. Our stop was then going to go at uh, $30.20. So we weren't stopped out of this one, and the stock did drop down uh, pretty nicely so far. So we're in this one at 29.95. I would say at this point you want to put your stop at uh, let's let's put our stop at 26.70 in uh, or 2670 29.70 is our stop in eBay we have options expiration tomorrow so be careful with that $30 start strike price uh, USO this is the oil fund uh, I had mentioned that this is a high-risk trade it's a stock that's clearly in a downtrend and it was considered for speculative purposes only Again, yesterday I was making the point of the biggest volume occur tends to occur at the end of a move, but you never know till after the fact 
if you're going to get bigger volume the next day with more downside. And that's exactly what we had happen in here. It seems panicky. It seems like there was bad news in there. Maybe that's what the market's been selling off on. But there's no evidence that this market is ready to turn around. It's got this declining five-day moving average, which rejected it today. So if we take a look at what my instructions were in here for that speculative purchase was to wait for a pullback down to uh, $43.80. So let's take a look at the two-minute time frame. A pullback to $43.80, which occurred right here, and then to buy it on strength above 43.95. So you can see obviously that didn't occur, so there was no reason to get involved. This stock was held captive all day by this Mac, uh, by this uh, VWAP rather. It, it held the VWAP early on, the VWAP it, it dropped below the VWAP and then was held prisoner to it all day long in USO. 